thank you for today, and I thank you for this time that you're going to allow us to have today to just uh, come into your presence, uh, and that we're able to worship you through song. Lord, I, I just hope that we can place our focus directly on you, and that we're not thinking about other things that are going on, or things that are going to happen later on today, Lord Jesus. I just pray that we can focus on you during this time. And Lord, I pray that uh, as we talk about uh, Martin Luther King Day a little bit, as we talk about our country and some of the things that are happening. And as we talk about our school and we pray about those things, Lord Jesus, I just pray that, uh, again, we can forget about uh, quizzes or tests or whatever that's happening later today, that we can even set ball games and uh, other activities aside for the next several minutes, and that we can just focus on you. We just thank you and praise you in your name. Amen.
You guys can have a seat right where you are. I'm going to stand up here today uh, because I'm using my computer and I don't want to trip over anybody because I'm making my way in and out. So if you just listen to us on Monday, we're going to have the day off of school. And I know that's exciting for some of you because you're going to get to sleep in or maybe you have sleepovers or you get to do whatever you kind of want to do on that day. But I think it wouldn't be right if we didn't tell you exactly why you have that day off. So I'm going to introduce you a little bit to Dr. Martin Luther King and tell you a little bit about his life. Again, I was talking to Mr. Moffat just a second ago. And there are so many, many things that I kind of researched this week. And I wanted to pull a clip out so that you could see his face and you could hear his voice. And the clip that we always hear is the one that I'm going to use today. There's about four minutes and it's of his I've Got a Dream speech. But I heard so many, many, many different speeches this week that he made. Uh, and I'll reference those in a little bit. Let me tell you who he was. He was born on January 15, 1929, and he died on April 4, 1968. That's younger than I am right now. I'm 50, he was 49. That'll give you kind of an idea of how young a guy he was. I still prefer the young most days. He was an American Baptist minister and an activist who was known as a leader in the civil rights movement. He's best known for his role in the advancement of civil rights using nonviolent civil disobedience. Nonviolent is the key word there, civil disobedience, based on his Christian beliefs. King became a civil rights activist early in his career, and he led the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott and helped found the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957, serving as its first president. With that conference, he led an unsuccessful 1962 struggle against segregation in Albany, Georgia, and then he helped organize the 1963 nonviolent protest in Birmingham, Alabama. King also helped to organize the 1963 March on Washington, where he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. There is where he established his reputation as being one of the greatest orators, speakers in American history. On October 14, 1964, King received the Nobel Peace Prize for combating racial inequality through nonviolent resistance at age 45. In 1965, he helped organize the Selma Montgomery marches, and the following year, he and his organization took the movement north to Chicago to work on segregated housing. In the final years of his life, Dr. King expanded his focus to include opposition towards poverty and the Vietnam War, alienating many of his liberal allies with his 1967 speech titled Beyond Vietnam. In 1968, Dr. King was planning a national occupation of Washington, D.C. to be called the Poor People's Campaign when he was assassinated on April 4th in Memphis, Tennessee. His death was followed by riots in many U.S. City, cities, and he was posthumously awarded with the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the Congressional Gold Medal. Martin Luther King Day was established as a holiday in numerous cities and states beginning in 1971, and it became a U.S. federal holiday in 1986. Hundreds of streets in the United States have been renamed for his honor, and a country in Washington State, I'm sorry, and a county in Washington State was also renamed for him. The Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. was dedicated in 2011. And some of his more famous speeches are, I've been to the mountaintop, letters from a Birmingham jail, I've got a dream, our God is marching on, a time to break the silence and mock you with me. And today I've asked uh, Mr. Moffat if he would come forward. And first I'm gonna show this clip. It's about four minutes. And if you would just be able to see his face and his voice. And then Mr. Moffat is going to come up. And he is going to be able to talk about growing up in the 60s and the 70s when, you know, a lot of these things were going on. So if you'd show the clip, that'd be great. So even though we face the difficulties of the day and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream. So even though we face the difficulties of the day and tomorrow, 
tomorrow. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today.
It is a humbling experience following something like that. I lived through a time frame in the 60s and into the 70s when I was a young person about your age where a lot of this was happening right in front of us. I was born in Chicago. I was raised here in Kenosha. Kenosha was a factory town. Kenosha was a middle class town. Kenosha was a northern town. When I was about your age and I was in high school, I was involved in a lot of different things. It was a different culture back then than it is today. I didn't pay much attention to the news because I was too busy. Was I aware that things were going on and that the world was changing around me? Sure I was. I was aware of that. But the high school that I was in, and my graduating class was bigger than this entire school. It was a big school. Was it a mixed school? It was. Did I have white kids and black kids in my classes? I did. Did I play football with white kids and black kids? I did. Was I on the track team with those guys? I was. I would not say that my father was a particularly great father, but he did teach me one thing. He was a manager of a department at a large automotive factory here in Kenosha, and one of the first things he told me was, it doesn't matter what color skin you have. I don't care if you're white, black, orange, or purple. If you're a hard worker and you do the best you can, I'm there with you. Now, a lot of the influences we have are the influences we get from our parents and from our culture. So from a young age, I didn't care about a color. I remember one time when I was in middle school, and we would settle our disagreements. I can neither confirm nor deny that I'm sharing this with you guys. We would share, we would solve our differences by going out behind the school, and we would trade lumps with each other until we came to some kind of an agreement. And I remember one time getting into a disagreement with a young man, and we agreed to meet and to resolve our differences after school. And I had one guy who stood behind me, one guy who was with me there when I went out. This other guy had a number of different people with him. The individual that I was facing to work out the differences with was white. The individual standing behind me, who was supporting me, was black. It didn't matter. Because back then, I and many other people did not judge an individual based off of how they looked or how they acted. What we did is we took a look at the character of the individual. Now, I can honestly say, I don't remember this speech. I do now. But back when it was given, I was a tiny little guy. You can approach people in multiple different ways. Do you judge them before you know them? Or do you take the time to get behind the skin and figure out what's there and like that person or dislike that person for who they are? Dr. King talked about a dream where individuals are not judged based off of the color of their skin but the content of their character. Is that where we are today? I also lived through the Vietnam era. I went through college during that time frame. Were there tremendous changes when I was in high school dealing with race relations? Yes, there were. Were there changes in the culture as a result of a war that most people disagreed with? Yes, there were. But what happened through the Vietnam War is we went away from non-violent, non-confrontational stuff to having it be a little more confrontational. We saw more things on the news. There were more protests. And all of a sudden, media starts kicking in, and before you guys even have a chance to think through whether or not you like someone, you've already made a decision based off of a sound bite, or based off of a Facebook posting, or based off of something else that's happened. And we don't take the time anymore to get to know people the way God knows them. We make judgments based off of faulty information. When I was your age, I was not a believer. I did not have Christ in my life. I do now. And the thing is, is that the Messiah, the Savior, that I worship and acknowledge as King, is an individual who, when he went to the cross, went to the cross for all people, regardless of whether they were Jew or Greek regardless of whether they were rich or poor, slave or free. 
regardless of whether they were male or female. And when he was on the cross and he surveyed everyone who was watching him die, he had each one of you guys in mind. And you know what? It doesn't matter about where you are. He died for you because he loves you. And I guess the challenge I would make as we get into a time in which we should be thinking about how this country is different from what it was. That we think through, how do we approach others? Do we do it like Christ did? Because he loved each of you enough to die for you. He was asked by the Pharisees to give the greatest commandment in the law. And he gives two. Love the Lord your God with everything you are. And love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Do we do that? We should. He should be our example. Dr. King should be our example. Don't respond to things that are going on around you. Get to know individuals, pray for individuals, love individuals, and the world's going to be a different place. So, just a few thoughts related to what he said and what we should be thinking. Okay, we're going to continue with um, some more worship top songs, so if you could stand up.
sing the best of all Think about uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, and if he was able to, you know, this doesn't happen, but if, except for Jesus, but if he was able to rise again uh, from his grave, and he was able to look at our country now, I think he would be shocked at some things. One, he would be shocked that in 2008, we elected a black man as president. I think that would have surprised him from his death in, in 1968 to where we, we were in 2008. But if we think for one second that his dream has been realized, you know, we're wrong in that as well. I don't want this to become a political speech, but Mr. Moffat said when he was his, your age, he didn't watch the news very much. And I don't know how much you guys watch the news, but there's still all kinds of issues in our country when it comes to the color of people's skin and the way that people think about that. And whether that be people of Muslim descent, whether that be people of Mexican descent, whether that be people uh, that are black, even sometimes race, uh, reverse racism, that all white people think a certain way. That we've got a long way to go. And I keep telling the seniors, and, and this is my kind of last message on this for the day. But I keep telling the seniors, if we could just be nice. If that could be our motto, be nice. If something isn't nice, then don't say it. If something isn't nice, then don't like it on Facebook. If something isn't nice, then don't post it on Instagram. Be nice. Love Jesus and be nice. Some of this could be taken care of. Later on this week, on the 20th, next Friday, we will transition from one president to another president. And that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. And there's been a lot of unrest with that situation as well. And we've talked about that a little bit here in chapel. And there's been a lot of that as well. And we've got a lot of major things that are going to happen in our country that are going to affect you guys as young people and people that are going to grow up in the next several years as much as they're going to affect me, a guy getting old. And, and there's all kinds of different things that are going to happen in our country. And so I'm going to ask Mr. Moffat if he'd come up again today. And if he would just pray for our country, if he would just pray for the direction our country is heading in, he might have a little bit of commentary uh, to this as well. But uh, ultimately, if, he, if you could join him when he leads us in prayer, that would be awesome. Thank you, Mr. Well, me have commentary? Luckily, you guys don't have 45 or 50 PowerPoint slides to ignore. We do have a transitional thing that is occurring. And when I think of this country, I think of the fact that God, through history, has had his hand on nations. And it's fascinating to me when I look at the Old Testament and I look at how God had his hand on certain nations for certain purposes. And that transitions even into the New Testament. And I wonder, did God have his hand on this country once upon a time? And does God still have his hand on this country? I'd like to pray. Again, Lord, as we look at the changes that are going to be occurring, I would pray, Lord, that your hand is still upon this nation because it is still a great nation. It is a light to the rest of the world. I would pray, Lord, that as transitions occur, as agencies change, as directions maybe change, that again, we as believers keep our nation in prayer, keep our leaders in prayer, outgoing leaders, incoming leaders. And we pray not that they do things a certain way, but that your hand is on them and that they receive your son as Savior. And that's the most important need we all have. I would pray, Lord, that some of the divisiveness that we have within our country could be healed. I would pray, Lord, that as we think through the timing of Martin Luther King's birthday and the celebration of what he believed and the installation of a new government, that we realize people still have dreams. We pray, Lord, for the best for our nation and for the individuals in this nation, that each individual can enjoy the freedoms that Dr. King talked about, 
and the freedoms that our country was founded on. And we use our opportunities to honor you and to better the kingdom. I pray, Lord, for revival in this nation. I pray, Lord, that we would turn our backs away from some of the things that have happened, some of the things that have distracted us from our purpose for being here. Revivals start often with the young. Revivals start often in small ways. But they can just spread like a fire and change everything. I would pray, Lord, for revival for this nation. And I would pray, Lord, for revival in the school. I would pray for attitudes to be changed. I would pray, Lord, that as we look forward into the future, we see what we can do to mentor the younger believers and younger individuals in the school. I would pray, Lord, that this is a beacon that changes Kenosha and Wisconsin, the United States, and eventually the world. It can start here if we just open ourselves up to you. Again, keep your hands on our nation as we go through the transitions. We pray this in Jesus' name. Okay, if you guys can stand up one more time, we're going to sing one last worship song together. And then Mr. Tennyson will come back to this us.
Um, I pray for athletics, God, such a big part of this school, and I just pray for all the sports teams that are competing now in the winter, and also that, that will continue in the spring, and then all through the summer and the next years, that you just bless them and all the travel that needs to happen, and for the games that I know are tonight, and for the tournament that's over the weekend, for the wrestlers, and any other competitions or games that are going on, God, I just pray that you just bless those, and that you bless the people who are injured right now, and just put your healing hands on them, and then your hand of protection on any other athletes, God, to just prevent the injuries, and just hopefully heal and get better, and I just thank you for all the things that you do, not only in my life, but in the lives of everyone. And I'd like to close with some prayer. Something that's on my heart. I get to work with you guys every day. And one of the things that, you know, I get to do is uh, come in and, and uh, communicate with parents, communicate with you guys as students, communicate with my teachers. And, you know, I, I love that. That's one of my favorite parts of what I get to do on a daily basis. That's why I push the garbage can around. Not because I like collecting garbage, but because I like stopping at your table and talking and, and seeing what's happening uh, and going on with you guys, teach a little bit uh, and have a good time. But one of the things that is a huge burden to me is the phone calls that I get, the email that I get, the personal face-to-face -face conversations that I get with our families that are just going through tremendous and whether that may be sicknesses, parents that are going through illnesses, even some of our students that are going through uh, major illnesses, uh, some of our families that are breaking up and having relationship issues and watching their, the students that are in the midst of that and wondering how they can possibly be concentrating on schoolwork and concentrating on the things that they have to do on a daily basis while their family is breaking up around them. And I just wanna pray for that. I just wanna pray for you guys today, specifically, for those of you that are, are having family issues. Sometimes it's financial issues, sometimes it's you know just all a variety, wide variety of things. And I just wanna pray for you guys today before we head out and head back to third hour. So if you could join me, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love these students and the families that are represented among these students, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I just pray right now as we're here in chapel today, Lord Jesus, I pray for those families that are hurting. And they may be hurting for a variety of different reasons, Lord. You know exactly what those situations are. Whether they're financial, Lord, we just pray that you meet their needs, Lord, that jobs are out there, that, that uh, you know, things that they're waiting on uh, will happen, and, and that, that, that the financial situation that these folks are struggling with will just turn around, even miraculously in some cases, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray for those that are sick and ill, and some that are just even trying to figure out what in the world's going on with their body. Uh, students that we have that are represented here in, at our school. You know, I think Cam even getting hurt last night and then coming out here and leading worship today. And Lord, I pray that you'll touch his body. And there are others, and I'm not going to name their names, those things are private, but Lord, I just pray that you'll touch their bodies. You know the families, you know the parents, moms and dads that are going through physical situations with these, and I just pray that you will touch their bodies and that you will heal them, Lord Jesus, and that they will just be able to come and testify to the fact that, man, something miraculous happened to me. And Lord, I pray for all the families that are having issues, staying together, those families that are breaking up, that are having divorces, that are having even, uh, you know, just crazy things happening in, in their families. Lord, I just pray that you'll heal that, those situations as well. Lord, you know exactly what is on my mind and exactly what I'm talking about. And Lord, I just pray that you will heal those, those situations. There is nothing that has happened that you're not capable of fixing in a heartbeat and, and changing minds and changing directions and changing hearts, Lord Jesus. We just know that you can do that. And I just pray, Lord, that you will protect our students. 
and Lord, that you will help them to understand, uh, you know, that they need to pray as well, and that they need to uh, just join with those that pray every day, Lord Jesus, and just continue to pray for each other uh, as we go on. Lord, I just thank you for this chapel time, and I just pray that you'll bless the rest of this day in your name. Amen. Head on to the third hour, guys.